we normally are able, even though we, we, we have a fleet now of 10, we're able to usually to put anywhere in the region like five to six ambulances on the road at any one time. And that's due to the staffing numbers. Um, we're able, I, I'll say that 15 to 1600 calls for December was a little bit of an anomaly because normally that really is usually in the region at 1200 or so. So, you know, with the holiday season, you have more incidents happening, both traumatic in terms of motor vehicle accidents as well as interpersonal violence, as well as you had, have more illnesses based on the non chronic. Um, communicable diseases or so, um, diabetes, high blood pressure, so you find persons may have crises related to those illnesses and stuff. A little bit more at Christmas time especially, people may not take their medication, people indulge a little bit more, etc. And that, that bears out in the traffic that you get. How has, uh, we know that the QVH, the a &E department has been having some challenges in terms of turnover persons passing through. How has that impacted the service being offered by the EAS? Yeah, that impacts us markedly. Um, as you can imagine, whenever we respond to a 511 call, uh, we normally go for the patient and put them on a stretcher. Sometimes when we do get there, um, there is no capability to transfer that patient from the ambulance trolley to any stretcher because of the number of patients there. Uh, we have to leave the trolley basically with the patient. Now we have invested in some um, surplus stretchers or so, but even sometimes that they're also those also are used up. So there's some times that we have personnel and we have ambulances, but we have basically no trolleys or limited amount of trolleys and that impacts in terms of our response time. Um, you may say then, so why not just buy lots of trolleys, 20, 30, 40. Again, it's the topographic space there in terms of where would you put them because a &E is a fixed space. Usually when they have all the stretchers, they're either parked in the corridors, sometimes double parked, etc. Mm -hmm. Even if we basically were to go about that in terms of buying lots more stretchers, it would be a situation then there may not be any space at all in the a &E plant to move the patients in. So it's a little bit of a balance that we um, try to basically negotiate on a day-by-day -day basis where we try to speak to the doctors there to see if there's anyone who can move off a stretcher, but it definitely sometimes impacts our capability to respond and also the response time. In addition to the a &E issues, what are the other challenges to response time that you're, you're, you're facing? The, the sheer numbers that, of, uh, that you have at, at, at this point, is that also a factor? Do you need more ambulances? Yeah, so I, I, I think, I mean, ambulances basically work with staff, and so we have actually uh, made the recommendation to have some more staff, and I think that is before the powers that be. So hopefully, if that is approved, we should be able to have more staff to be able to service the population. I would say, you know, Minister may have alluded to the fact that, you know, persons may call and it may not be an emergency, but, you know, I, I sympathize with persons and empathize because to the person who is in the crisis, not knowing, they will make a call. Uh, we can't blame people for that. It's for us then to prioritize, to triage the calls and stuff the best way we can in terms of doing the best we can for the most. No, you're moving to a system where we've heard the minister, the Home Affairs Minister, say that we're looking towards a, I call it a 911 system, an integrated system. You have new headquarters coming in, I believe, uh, just around the corner. Um, has there, with all of the, all of what has been happening, there was a call previously for the decentralization of the service. Is that something that is still necessary with the 10, the 10 working ambulances you have? Or is this something that you could say, well, we could put down the back burner for now? Yeah, so decentralization is essential. I think right now we operate two stations, one here in Wildey, uh, which gives a decent response time, I would say, to central and southern Barbados. Um, the other stations are Archall, which allows for better response times to the west and north of Barbados. There are some areas, though, I would say in southeastern Barbados, in St. Philip's and John, etc., which we service from this station, where the response time is something that we would like to improve. And uh, we've made a recommendation that somewhere probably in the Six Roads or some other area in St. Philip to be able to be used as a jump off point would aid in terms of response time to those areas to, to render care. 
I'm not sure how far that is in terms of the thinking, um, but certainly um, it is something that we have made uh, some level of uh, recommendation to. Um, as you said, we should be moving somewhere time in 2024 to new joint headquarters with the Barbados Fire Service, which is maybe a few meters down the road. And so th those issues will still remain in that basically in terms of the response times to the areas mentioned, it will still there will still be need for decentralization because we're just moving from one spot here to basically a few meters down the road.